Good evening, everybody. I am Rishi, and I am from Indian Institute of Science, Education, and Research, Mohali, India. And these are the newly developed institute in India, which are promoting science. And these institutes are de got developed in 2007 itself. And India has started integrated MS program first time. In, so, and I am the first batch student of ISA Mohali. And I am enrolled in integrated MS program and majoring in biology and my interest lies in neuroscience. So I came through for a Corona program for my internship here and the project which I carried out has titled as Temperature Dependence of Hydrophobic Residue Substitutions in Voltage Gated Potassium Channels. So coming to the role of these voltage gated potassium channels, they are important in generating and propagation of electrical impulse in excitable cells like neurons, heart cells and they are closed at resting membrane potential but opens in response to depolarization and they are responsible for the repolarizing phase of the action potential. As you can see here, when the depolarizing phase occurs, the sodium ions flows in inside the cell and the potential membrane potential increases and in response to that, these potential voltage gated potassium ion channels opens up and potassium flows from inside cell to the outside and the resting membrane potential comes at the resting state once again. So going to the structural aspects of these voltage gated potassium channels, they are homotetramer with six transmembrane segments. They are termed as S1, S2, S3 up to S6. They have three basic functional parts. One is voltage sensor. So the first Four domains are called voltage sensor S1, S2, S3, and S4. S4 is called primary sensor, and the positive charges are due to arginine. The other region is pore or the conducting pathway, which is this region, which links S5 to S6. And the third one is gate, which is the C terminal domain of these voltage gated potassium channel. So whenever there is an increase in the potential, then S4, S so S4 domain pulls up and then it pulls S4, S5 linker and the gate opens up and potassium ions flows from inside to the outside of the cell. These voltage sensing domains which are abbreviated as VSD, they have conserved sequence among all the families of voltage gated ion channels. So the conserved sequence is RXX, 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 R. So you can see at every third position there are arginine and in between the 2x shows the hydrophobic residues and in my case the potassium channel which I am studying is shaker and it has a signature sequence of RVI, RLV, RVFR. So the major goal of my lab is to understand why certain voltage gated channel such as strip amp channel are temperature sensitive and we are using volt, our voltage gated potassium channel to address these issues and we are trying to engineer the temperature sensitivity in voltage gated potassium channels by mutating certain key residues in the voltage sensing domain. And if we get some good idea about the voltage sen temperature sensitivity in voltage gated potassium channel, then we can go back to the trip channel and can address the temperature sensitivity there. So the objective of my project is to study the temperature dependence of hydrophobic residue in voltage-gated potassium channel at two regions. The one is S4 helix and the other one is adjo adjoining regions like which involves S1 to S3 domains of voltage sensing domain. So electrophysiological method which I use to carry out the experiment part. The first one is RNA construct injection. So we mutated our RNA by PCR mutagenesis and the RNA was injected in from two sides and then we did voltage clamp recording which is called cut open voltage clamp here is the cartoon which represents the cut open voltage clamp technique so here one voltage is clamped and the other electrode is inserted inside the frog sides and we gave a pulse of different voltages and we got the current from there so the voltage clamp protocol has depolarizing pulse, repolarizing pulse and the corresponding currents are called I saturation and I tails so, Explaining the ionic current traces and voltage clamp protocol, here is the data for wild type. So here you can see in the first 
picture I gave the voltage B pulse at minus V20, minus 120 and then depolarizing pulse at minus 90 and then depolarizing pulse at minus 120 and this is called one cycle and we get correspondingly the ionic currents for high temperature and for low temperature as well. So every step in, in after each cycle we increase the depolarizing potential by 5 millivolt so from going minus 90 millivolt up to plus 90 millivolt we record the ionic traces at high temperature and low temperature and we have plot this graph which has I by I max and voltage. So to plot this graph we just look at this I tails because these are the these are the ionic currents because of the potassium ion which is flowing from inside to outside the cell. So the I max value is when all the potassium channels are open. So the maximum amount of the current which can flow from inside to outside the cell corresponds to the I max and which so this I max can be correlated to the opening probability of the potassium channel. So when I am getting I max it shows that all the channels are open hence the probability of opening is 1. So for each depolarizing pulse we record I and we divide our I value by I max and normalize on the scale of 0 to 1 and plot it on the Y axis and corresponding depolarizing voltage we plot on the X axis. So this kind of graph can be generated. Here the blue one is the lower temperature graph at 8 degrees Celsius and the higher temperature is 27 degrees Celsius and correspondingly we get the red graph. So when the I by I max value is half, we call the voltage as V half. So V half is the empirical measure of half of the channels are open. So for the analysis of the data which I get, we used two equations, delta G is equals to ZF V half minus V and delta G is equals to delta H minus T delta S. And when we take the difference at any two points, then we get delta of delta G is equals to ZF, ZF delta V half and for the second, from the second equation we can get delta of delta G is equals to delta of delta H minus T delta of delta S. So I will define two terms over here, delta VW and delta VT and their effects. So if delta VW, so here delta VW is the change in V half of the mutant with respect to wild type and delta VT is the change in V half of the mutant with respect to temperature. So if delta VW is zero, so my mutant is not showing any effect with respect to Y type. And if delta VT is zero, there is no temperature there is no temperature dependent effect in the mutation. So when both are zero, then there is no so the mutation effect is null. When delta VW is zero and delta VT is non-zero, then you can get difference in the change in field enthalpy is non-zero and difference in the change of entropy is zero is non-zero as well. Similarly in the third situation we can have delta VW non-zero so the wild type and mutant both are showing change in delta VW but the delta VT is zero hence the difference in the change of entropy is zero but difference in the change in enthalpy is non-zero. Similarly if both are non-zero then we can conclude delta of delta X is non-zero. So I will not explain all my results in terms of in terms of delta VW and delta VT but I will I will go into the detail later as I move through the experiments. So the first experiment which I carried out I mutated all the four arginine residues like R362 into R at the 362 position into alanine and I call it R1 similarly R at 365 position into alanine R2 and like that and I recorded through voltage gram technique and analyze delta V half from the IV plot which I have already shown for the wild type. So these are the results for for these mutations. So here you can see when I by I max and V plot is V plotted I by I max and V for R1A then we cannot see any difference at two temperatures. So both graphs are overlapping. Same goes for R368A and R371A but the striking feature comes for R2A. Here you can see for 27 degrees Celsius the V half is close to zero but for the 8 degrees Celsius temperature the V half is 
lower than zero and there is a shift. So it shows that at eight degree Celsius temperature, the V half is lower at 27 degrees Celsius. So the process is becoming more favorable for lower temperature. Hence, this mutant can be characterized as cold sensitive mutation. But rest of these mutations are not temperature sensitive at all because they are not showing any prominent shift as we change the temperature. So here are two way is cold sensitive. For experiment two, we mutated first to hydrophobic residues into alanine, methionine and isoleucine in the increasing order of hydrophobicity. And then we recorded at two temperatures the I by I max and V. So here you can see for A2 there is very less shift in at two temperatures in the plot and but for M2 and I2 you can see there is a 25 degree milli, 25 millivolt shift for M2 and I2 at these two temperatures and you can see as I am decreasing the temperature the process is becoming more favorable that's why the V half value is decreasing so for M2 and I2 I can say that these two mutations are cold sensitive for experiment 3 we mutated all the six residues into alanine, methionine and isoleucine same in the same increasing order of hydrophobicity and we recorded again for these mutants and here we go get a prominent shift for 28 degrees Celsius here you can see at 8 degrees Celsius the V half is 0 0.23 millivolt but for 28 degrees Celsius the V half goes down up to minus 28.77 millivolt so as I am increasing the temperature, the process is becoming more favorable. That's why the V half value is decreasing. So this mutant can be characterized as heat sensitive. But for I6, there is no change in the V half for 8 degrees Celsius temperature and 28 degrees Celsius temperature. So I6 is temperature insensitive. Now, in the fourth experiment, we mutated all the four we, we did point mutation in adjoining regions of S4 domain. So these first two mutations are here in S1 in, in the top part which I am showing here and the last two mutations are in the bottom of these VSD. So the graphs for all four are here. So Y323I mutation shows that at 28 degrees C V half value is less than the V half value at 8 degrees Celsius. So the process is much more favorable for higher temperature, hence this mutation can be characterized as heat sensitive. For S240A there is a shift at higher temperature but the shift is not very prominent. For N313A there is no change at in V half for 8 degrees Celsius and 37 degrees Celsius but for E293I there is a shift and you can see at 8 degrees Celsius the process is becoming more favorable more channels are open at lower voltage so this mutation is cold sensitive to summarize my result I have plotted the V half for each mutant and for Y type also so here you can compare the result so the, all the asteric signed mutants are either heat sensitive or cold sensitive so here you can see the shift in the V half just to compare and the conclusion is for point mutation R1A does not show any shift so it is neither heat sensitive nor cold sensitive for R2A we can see it is cold sensitive the Y323I is heat sensitive E293 is cold sensitive for M2 and I2 both are cold sensitive and M6 is heat sensitive so my acknowledgement goes to Barun Chanda who is my project supervisor and he supported for my stay and for my project and Sandeepan he is a graduate student in his lab and he is really very hard working and he taught me everything from the scratch and now I feel like I can work on rig by myself and I did and other lab members who are all here and they are very supportive like Kevin, Trevor, Marcel, Brian so I am very happy to be there for two months and I really learned a lot from them. I